Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different Swell YouTube channel. I hope you all out there having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, manifest, plan, and prepare for a better one because I guarantee you all it is surely coming to you guys for sure. And if this is your first, second, third time or more to my YouTube channel, welcome. Happy to have you guys. Before you leave, definitely hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so when I drop content, you guys come into Different Swell and you come and learn about your girl, yeah? And speaking of coming and learning about your girl, you guys, I'm an author, motivational speaker, uh, let's see what else I am, a travel influencer, content creator, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, first, second, third time, or more, it don't matter, just hit the subscribe button for your girl, yeah? All right, you guys, so today's Wednesday, hump day, uh, ending our 2023, uh, it's almost over with you guys, so we gotta keep pushing forward and, and uh, making sure we uh, just uh, scratch off every goal we got on that list like I'm doing um, this week. My birthday is this Friday, the 15th, it's saggy season, so turn up. Um, just trying to go hard, you guys. So with this one, you guys know on Wednesday we drop our podcast interviews. So with my collaboration with this one, we got another hot one uh, with my girl Danielle uh, Migo uh, with the Sisters Talk podcast. And I had a very good time talking with her um, on her pod podcast and using her platform to share my story and testimony uh, and promoting my business and my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, and just, you know, shooting the breeze with my girl and talking with her about you know sisterhood and, and womanhood and just being our own in this society and in America and I so had a great time with her and big shout out to her she also has her own book as well as her short story she's doing it big you guys so uh, definitely check out her uh, YouTube channel and her short story Nilla uh, I dropped the link below in the description and so you guys definitely check that out after you guys check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, you guys, me yip yapping and jaw jacking, I want to share with you all my audio interview with my um, uh, interview with the lovely Miss Danielle. And so, without that further ado, check it out. And when we come back, I will talk a little bit more about what's going on in the difference world, yeah? Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Sisters Talk podcast. And today we have a very special guest with us today. Different. Can you please let them know who you are, where you're from, and tell them why you're on the show today? Of course, thank you for coming on. Of course, of course, of course. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Happy to be here, and shout out to everybody listening and watching to the Sister Talk podcast. Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R-N-T, and happy to be here. Rock out with your girl and do some Sister Talk and share my story with you guys. I'm just here to share my testimony in hopes of inspiring and motivating others uh, that may be going through trials and tribulations in their life and just showing, you know, what can happen for you, you know, when you take control of your life and get your mental health in check and start going after your dreams and goals and what you're truly meant for in this lifetime. So that's just what I'm here to do. So let's get it. Absolutely. I appreciate that, too, because um, that's a profound introduction. That's what we all need to be doing. And you do have quite the story. You travel. You've had a, a real journey in front of you. And I really want you to, if you can, give us a, a little bit of your backstory and tell us, um, you know, where you grew up and some of the challenges that you faced reaching success. Okay. Um, well, first off, I'm long-winded, so I just want to let you guys know they're right up front. <laughs> So if you ask me a question to share, to share my story, I'm going to share with you that it may take time. Um, <clears throat> but just to give you guys a little bit of background about who I am as of today, um, I'm an author, I'm a motivational speaker, CEO of my own small business, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that tries to bring motivation to, excuse me, social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. Um, I also do motivation speaking as well as well as a travel influencer and content creator. And I'm 32 years old. I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, I like doing adventurous things, of course, traveling the world, um, reading books, doing ATV bike riding, zip lining, you name it. Um, giving you guys a little bit of background about who I am and where I come from. I had a 
a pretty good childhood up until the time I was around 11. And uh, me and my family, we ended up on hard times. <clears throat> and I ended up on, you know, homeless for around three years, living from pillow to post, excuse me. And um, to where we would live into shelters, cars, bus stops, stranger's house, sleeping at parks, uh, even at one point, you know, sleeping at a crack house. And it was like this for me for three years up until the time I was 14. And a family member that I was staying with secretly placed me in foster care. And none of my other family members knew where I was for about six months. And uh, during that time, I found out from another foster kid that if you stayed in, then the state of Texas, if you age out, by the time you were 18, they would pay for your tuition to college. And so right there, you know, a light bulb went out in my head and I just had to, you know, use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and just make that decision to stay in the system rather than going back into that environment that was, you know, no good for me and, and I felt wasn't going to get me anywhere. I think this was my meal ticket uh, into a better life. And so I, I chose the lesser of the evil, if you will. You know, spending four years in foster care was no walking apart. Uh, basically, you don't have a name. You become a case number and being shuffled from, you know, five foster homes, two shelters, uh, dealing with different personalities and day in and day out, that turns you into somebody who you never imagined you could be. And it's by the grace of God, you know, that I came through it all. I ended up graduating from high school and going to San Houston State University. And that was just a, a, so many doors and opportunities opened up for me in itself. Uh, first opportunity I got was to travel abroad, which is where my uh, travel bug was planted. I got to study abroad at Kim Young University, uh, South Korea. And with there, uh, I spent four months over there and then just got the opportunity to travel to eight other countries, including Japan, China, and all over Europe. And so that's where my travel book was planted. And then I also got the opportunity to start my own student organization titled Pay It Forward. And one of the branches would be to go out and speak into different high schools on the importance of education and then just doing the right thing and like making right choices. And it was there where my motivation to book was planted. You know, I would share my story and my testimony and, toward, and towards the end, kids would come up to me and would be like, well, I'm going through the same thing, but I didn't know the state of Texas would pay for your tuition to college and I'm a go. And so right there, that's where I knew I, I had, you know, a purpose in life to share my story to help, you know, inspire and encourage others. And um, I also ended up graduating uh, with my bachelor's in international business. I got two minors in economics and business communication. A few years later, I ended up getting my uh, master's degree in entrepreneurship. I'm also a Texas real estate agent and an insurance agent as well. But, you know, having all those notches and accomplishments under my belt, it really Danielle, if I wasn't, you know, still right within, I was still dealing with issues from my childhood that I had carried on from, you know, throughout high school, college, all into my young adulthood to where, you know, it would cause me to, uh, well, put it to you like this, <clears throat> coming up in a chaotic environment for me for three years, and anybody who has been through that situation have come up in an abnormal environment, if you will, to them, it would seem normal. And so when I got placed out of or taken out of that environment and placed in foster care, I was actually placed in good foster homes or nice uh, foster families who had nice homes and, you know, were well educated. And they were black, just like me, and had nice cars and were well off. And that just, you know, right there, it showed me that that's what I wanted in life. But also at the same time, it was completely new to me and it felt like it was too good to be true. And so I had that notion in my head that, you know, nothing less ever and so I might as well be the captain of my own ship and decide when to sink the ship and so that's what I would do with self-sabotage and put people push them away and become just a very off-putting person and it was like that for me throughout high school into college and again through my adulthood into where it started to affect my careers the opportunities that I had coming my way I had a lot of opportunities coming my way and I squandered it because I didn't know how to handle it I didn't know how to believe in myself and think I was worthy of it there was one opportunity that I had that I dwelled on for the longest. I had a meeting with a well-connected person, and I let those, you know, negative thoughts in the back of my head get to me, you know, telling me I'm not good enough. I would just take it 
interview you because you're a foster kid. And so I and purposely showed up late to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth. And, you know, for the longest for years on afterwards, I would dwell on it and just regret, you know, what I did. And, and among other things that I did, uh, that, that you know, messed up things I had going for me. But at the end of it, I, you know, had to look myself in that mirror and face the ugly truth and just say to myself, whatever I went through as a child, whatever, you know, what may have not been my fault, it was out of my control, but as an adult, it's on me to fix. And so right then and there, you know, facing going towards my 30, I had to look up, make that decision and dismiss that notion that black people don't do therapy. And this black girl right here went and did some therapy and in doing so, I'm glad I did because, you know, getting my mental health in check or maintaining it, it led to me writing the book and starting the business and, you know, helping us. And so that's where I am with it today. And so I feel like I'm talking too much. So <laughs> jump in and ask me some questions. Oh, no, you're definitely, no, you're definitely not talking too much. I mean, I'm letting you talk because you are telling your testimony and it's profound. Like you just said earlier that you had one of the family members like basically kidnapped you and put you into foster care. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because we don't want to bulldoze over something like that's really bizarre and that's life changing for you. How have you managed life through that? Well, it wasn't really kidnapping. I mean, they, they, they're uh, uh, the times I had to me. And also, I'm going to say, you know, things that happened to me in my past, I don't dwell on it. I don't hold grudges. I forgave and move on as well as I respect my family's privacy. And so I never drop names and say who did what. And so uh, with that, I like to keep it. Uh, unless, you know, until I write my book and just share all the <laughs> details, um, I don't get too in-depth of what, 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 what happened or who did what. But I was staying with a family member at the time, and they wasn't willing to, you know, take care of me like that stated that they would. And instead of, you know, sending me out to another family member, they decided to be spiteful and be mean hearted and uh, took me to CPS and uh, basically just left me there. They're like, okay, well, we got to take care of it. Okay, it brings, yeah, that brings a lot more clarity to me because I was a little confused there. I was under the wrong reception so that makes a lot more sense and i can understand you know through privacy yeah exactly yes, ma'am. And then, and so mm-hmm, go ahead go ahead mm-hmm. well hold on i can imagine hold on now mind you i'm, I'm from phil ward in houston texas and being an 11 year old girl and seeing things that you should not see at that age it made me into who I am, which was a tough chick, an alpha female, one that that's not to be played with or, or will not let nobody take her and, and try to face up. If there's anybody that came up on me and will try to kidnap me, trust and believe they're going to have to put in some work with this one. But they're going to give you back. They're going to give you back. Nah, I've heard crazy stories of being in the system and in foster care and hearing other kids' stories and, and why they were in there, that also is what kept me humble and what got me through it because one thing about it is somebody out there who always has it 10 times worth or worse. So although I went through some tough and, and crappy things in my life, God has brought me through it and I'm grateful for it and I'm grateful that I have not been through worse than like how others are going through. And so that's what keeps me humble and, and keeps me out of the blue and keeps me moving forward in life and not stuck on the past. And so what I went through, it's all, it was only preparation to prepare me for what I'm about to receive in my lifetime and what I have to do in this life. And so that's how I look at it. That's how I, and then don't get it twisted. For the longest I dwelled on the things that happened to me in the past and it was hard for me to get over it and move on. But once I realized and seen how much I was missing out on by looking back and looking, you know, on being stuck on the past, then I got it together and was like, oh, wait, oh, I got on board with that. Everything, you know, seems like it fell in line. And again, my life isn't perfect. I'm still a work in progress. Uh, for me, therapy, it's not a one, it wasn't a one stop to stop fix. And so I want anybody out there that's listening and watching and knowing that if you do decide and make that uh, decision to, uh, to full on commit to keeping and getting your mental health checked, please know that it's not a one stop shop. It's a full-on commitment. Once you start, you cannot stop. That's just like if you decide to get your physical house in order and give up eating all the junk food and unhealthy foods and start eating healthy and working out and exercising, 
once you start, you can't stop because if you do, you're going to be worse off. And so for those that's thinking that going to therapy and talking to a therapist one time, sitting on their couch for one hour is going to fix everything in your life, guess what? It's not. And so if you make that decision, please know that it's a decision you're going to have to stick with for the rest of your life. As long as you're living, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. And so I also want to take this time to note for anybody out there that's listening and watching that may be going through any type of trial and tribulation, that may be struggling with any mental illness, stress, anguish, whatever the case may be, I want you guys out there to know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you. You're talking with a therapist, a family member, a friend, picking up a hobby, getting on medication, cutting people off from me, you know, well, mending broken bridges. Do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end. And me, or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255. Or you can call or text 988, or you can text 741-741. And for those that will prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us, or you can visit 988lifeline.org. Or for those that are outside of the U.S. and that's watching the Girls Sister Talk podcast, you guys can check out incounseling.com. And incounseling is spelled E N C O U N S E L. ING.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, you have to realize that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the waters, not anybody else. And lastly, when it comes to mental health, I, got, I want you guys to remember, again, whatever trial and tribulation that you may be going through at this time of your life, you will get through this, and this too shall pass. And so, therefore, going off the deep end is not an option, so it's not worth it, so therefore, don't do it. Um, I always like to share that little <laughs> portion wherever I go. No, I appreciate that. That may need it, and, and trust me, I've, I've definitely called those numbers more than once. Uh, I'm, I'm battling and going through my, my battlefield of mind when it comes to mental health. In 2021, I lost five people in my family back to back to back. And with my mother being the last person, she died in my arms the day after Christmas. And her birthday just passed on October 1st. And so I, I had to do something to keep myself busy and active and make sure, you know, I didn't mope around or go off the deep end. And so it's things like that, you know, we have to set yourself up and, and, and know what is and what doesn't work for you when it comes to uh, your mental health. You know, for me, again, I'm not perfect. I'm a work in progress. Even though I'm sitting here sharing my story with you guys and, and telling you try this and try that, again, what may work for some may not work for others. So you can get out there and do your own homework and research and find what works best for you. Point of it all is to under, understand and know that it's okay to not be okay, but don't sit there and not be okay when it comes to your mental health. I often tell people, again, whatever you went through as a child, even as a young adult, what you're going through right now, it may or may not be your fault. It may have not been out of your control, but if it's keeping you up at night and causing you to lose sleep and you can't move on in life and it's holding you back, then again, you have to remember, it's a problem that's on you to fix, whether if you cost it or not, it's holding you back from what you're supposed to do in life. And so even if you don't feel the need of talking with a therapist, it isn't going to work. Again, find what works best for you. Um, I heard one uh, person was telling me, well, I can't afford to talk to a therapist. I'm not going to pay a guy, a person, $100 just to come to them the cops and talk for a certain amount of time and my problems are fixed. Okay, fine. That's understandable. Uh, talking with a therapist is expensive. And so, but again, you can't let, don't let finances be the reason why you don't keep your mental health in check or you don't at least try to <laughs> keep your mental health in check. And so, again, that's why you have to get online, find your research, excuse me, and find what works best for you. There are a lot of free resources out there for people that, that may need it. And again, you just have to find what works best for you. And I know for me, when I was talking with, you know, my therapist, 
it helped me, you know, work through some things and he encouraged me to get back into something that I love, which was journaling and writing and doing so, uh, being stuck in the house for the pandemic, having nowhere to go, uh, being a person that loves to travel all over the world and can't, um, uh, that's what I started doing. And then May 25th, 2020 happens the day that George Floyd dies and, uh, right there, he, he's from fifth excuse me, he's from Third Ward, not from Fifth Ward in Houston, Texas. And so when they were doing his protests and marching in his honor, uh, I wanted to be a part of it. However, when it came down to it, I felt like I wanted my voice to be heard more than just in that moment in time, more long after I'm gone. So talking with God and, and being in tune and asking him for the spirit of discernment and what to do and what can I do to, you know, get people's atten- attention and, and do something that's going to, you know, I don't want to say rock the cradle, if you will, but what I've noticed about this society today is that, you know, people love controversy. They flock to controversy before they'll flock to something that's, you know, real and serious and needs to be, you know, addressed. <laughs> and so the way that I, you know, ended up setting up the book, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift is in uh, a in a way that'll get your attention. And again, my book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done it through provocative and graphic illustrations. And so again, this book, it does come with a parental advisory warning, if you will. Uh, This is intended for a mature audience. It has sensitive content. And so those out there that can't take the heat, Come on to the kitchen. Just get your little fire breaking. You'll be all right. <laughs> that's the point of it all. It's just to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug and turned a blind eye to. And the way that I've said, what if a controversial paradigm shift up is in four main paradigm uh, or categories of paradigms. And then we have historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And each of these paradigms, I'm speaking in different and true and actual events that have occurred in America, within the African-American community. And just simply and basically asking the question, you know, what if is a basic race role reversal? And asking that question, what if this was your people? What if this was still happening to your people? What then? And so for instance, if you go to the, the first chapter, one of the first pages that I ask or the questions that I ask is, what if in 1619, Africans started dealing in illegal slave trading whereas they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships to America. And then you'll see that graphic illustration that have the uh, white slaves in chains and the black slave traders, you know, whipping them. You'll have white slaves jumping from ships as we did. And again, this book isn't to incite any type of racial war. It's not to point fingers on and blame game or, or you did that to us. It's simply, you know, a what if book to make you think about things that have happened in today's time that that happened in the past, but yet still happened. What if still happened to your people? And so uh, I wrote that book and uh, I started in June, 2020. I finished the manuscript in December, 2020. And then I asked my lawyer to read it. Uh, she gave it high praises and you know her, her advice on it. Then she asked me that question that rocked my world. She said, Different, what's the name of your business? And I'm like, huh, what, huh? I kept telling her my name, my book, what if? And she's like, no, I don't think you understand. I, I say, when you have a product and you sell it to the public, public you have to have a name of, of LLC. And so right then and there, I had to hit the ground running, uh, trying to figure out how to start my own LLC. And one thing about life, Danielle, is teachers, no matter how many degrees you have on your belt, experience you got, been all over the world, you still don't know crap, or you still, it's still, things out there that you can learn. And so I don't care if I have a PhD or, or if I have you know, 100 degrees under my belt, I'm still, it's still things out there that I need to learn in life. And so I'm never too old or too young to learn anything. And so um, with that, I, again, asking God for the spirit of discernment and, and what this name can be for my business, um, this is what I came up with. We have a little Third Eye Entertainment LLC Again, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So, um, again, when it comes to social awareness and talking about topics such as, uh, again, one of the topics we talk about 
is inequality, injustice. Uh, we also talk about social issues within the month, such as you know, breast cancer awareness would be an issue we talk about in the month of October. Next month, we will talk about prostate cancer awareness, and we talk about domestic violence issues, LGBTQ, uh, any, any issue or social awareness issue topic that needs to be brought to light, we talk about it there at my YouTube channel. As well as we're not just about talking about, you know, dark clouds. Uh, we also, again, try to bring you some entertainment and education. So I do a lot of motivational vlogs, as well as um, I drop a lot of pop culture reviews, as well as and my most importantly, my travel vlogs, uh, being traveled to just about 50 countries before the pandemic started. Um, I was going all over the world. And so now uh, what I'm doing is putting my videos together and posting them on my YouTube channel. I think I got about 20, 25 travel blogs posted thus far. And so just been working on promoting that and uh, driving all the traffic to my YouTube channel, Different World, YT, come and learn. You guys be sure to hit that subscribe button, by the way. Um, and so that's pretty much it, where it's going for me and, and what most importantly, getting my mental health in check led me doing. And so point of it all and me being on the show Danielle and, and what I want everybody to take away from it from my story is how and, and I'm not trying to get religious or political I, I'm, I'm not a religious person but I do believe in the higher power and so with that being said <clears throat> I want those out there that again that may be going through any trial and tribulation or even those that are not I want them to see my life as an example of what can happen or what will happen for you if you, you know allow God to take you from the back place you up front and and again for a person that's not perfect and I have a lot of flaws and I've made a lot of mistakes in my life but if you again you look at my life overall in its totality you will see that I live a blessed life man and what I've been through in my past is nothing compared to what's coming for me in my future man so much better that's, that, that's coming for me because look how how you know when you look at your life and you get it together in, in the sense of reprogramming your mind. Again, I don't want to get too, I'm, not to say, I'm, I'm too preachy or anything. So that's why I'm trying to tread lightly on what I say. But again, it really started for me when it came to reprogramming my mind and just removing all that doubt and fear. That's how I came up with my motto, manifest, plan, prepare. And what I mean by that is for those who believe that they're destined for greatness in life, have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and it will surely come to them. And so the manifest part comes to where you're removing all the doubt, all the fear, all the naysayers, uh, removing anything that's negative out of your mind and replacing it with positive affirmation, seeing it before you receive it, you know, uh, speaking it into existence. And next, you plan for it, write it out on paper, write up a backup plan, have an exit plan. You can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it's coming. And again, Whenever it comes to you, just know that whatever trial and tribulation that you face with, this too shall pass and you will get through it because you're a boss. And so when that happens, uh, just know that it's okay. You'll get through it and it'll make you a better person. So allow whatever trial and tribulation When I say prepare, that means from the inside out. Uh, getting your mental house in order, your physical house in order, your financial house in order, mending broken bridges, cutting people off who mean you know well. Uh, again, so therefore, whatever you're manifesting and planning for, whenever it comes to you, you can be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it. You won't feel like you're unworthy of it. I felt in the past, and so when you, one thing about it, when I when I noticed when I worked for the things that I wanted, and it came to me. I felt more, much more like I've earned it and nobody could take it away from me because I've worked for what I put out and it came back to me. And so that's how I, I view life now. Opportunities come my way or blessings come my way. I don't second guess it. I don't feel like I'm unworthy. I don't let those negative thoughts get to me and try to talk me out of it like how I would have in my 20s. And so that's just what, you know, getting your heart and your mind uh, together and getting it right and once they're in tune you can achieve you know the impossible and so that's why I say manifest plan and prepare for whatever it is in life that you want and then it'll surely come to you guys.
if it's what Absolutely. I love it. I mean, you definitely gave a lot of positive information, a lot of positive uh, advice about mm-hmm. how to ground yourself. It's more about the grounding, you know, and finding your place within not only society, but within yourself. And so I really love that. And I see a lot of growth in you. And that's my first time seeing you and talking to you today. Uh, We've talked behind the scenes before, but I mean, just having you on the show is a different experience. And I really appreciate you for being a guest today because um, you you were were vulnerable at some points of this conversation. And then you were very um, influential, you know, and others. And, And it comes from a place of experience, I can tell. So I really appreciate having you on today. You tell it straight. I love a straight shooter. Yeah, I try to be. But I also would like to say this. If anybody's wondering, well, what can I take away from getting my mental health check or talking with somebody about my problems? Here's what I've learned and what the steps that came in for me. When I went, when I started getting my mental health check, I won't say going to therapy because it took more than just going to therapy to start realizing this about myself and others. When I started to get my mental health in check, what I realized is I became more self-aware. And when you become self-aware, you become your self-aware with your surroundings and the things around you, what you do and what others do. After you become self-aware, you start to find your voice. And when you find your voice, you're able to speak out and speak up on things that have bothered you. And when you find your voice, you're able to set boundaries. And when we have boundaries in, in place with our friends and families and, and people around us in general, uh, I've realized you, you're able to live a much peaceful life. You're able to protect your peace when you have boundaries. And so that's what can happen for you as well when you get your mental health in check or get yourself together or reprogram your mind. And so think about it like that, you guys. For anybody that's, that's you know, two-step and a toe tapping around it, uh, as well as if you know that you have a problem and you don't want to get up and do something about it and fix it, then it is your fault. <laughs> you say you love a straight shooter, so I'm going to keep it real with you. As well as there's a lot of people out there that have problems that they know they need to fix, but don't want to get up and do nothing about it except to sit there and wallow in their mess, then it is on them. If you don't want to be a part of the solution, then you're part of the problem, either or. You know, there is somewhere in between. So with that, uh, I want to take this time to thank you, Danielle, for having me on your show. I uh, just want to remind you that you are a queen. You have a crown on your head, and you're walking it oh so well. Uh, again, thank you for everybody out there listening and watching. Be sure to check out my website, differenceworld.net, and get my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, available now, as well as you can check out all my other social media handles, including my Instagram, my TikTok. I'm on TikTok as well, trying to learn that. <laughs> and, of course, my YouTube channel, where I would definitely love for you guys to go and subscribe. Um, as well as, again, don't forget, wherever it is in life that you guys are feeling that you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you guys. Difference world, I'm going to learn. As well as rest in peace to my mom over in Kilroy, who didn't shut her Most definitely. I think your audio went out on us for just a moment, but definitely we got the RIP to your mom and definitely got a lot of gems out of this conversation. It takes a strong person like yourself to come onto a show and open up like you did today. And again, I just want to thank you and thank you for um, reminding me of my crown. My crown sometimes sits to the side like T.I., but it's still there because <laughs> we all have a lot going on. <laughs> we all got a lot going on. <laughs> So I have to readjust it sometimes. Yes, I have to readjust it sometimes. So I'm telling you, so never ever forget that. Absolutely, but I want to thank you again, guys. Make sure you go out and follow this queen. Okay, she has YouTube channels, TikTok channels. I'm gonna I'm gonna put all all the websites here. I think that's the same one. Go to her website. You should be able to find everything you need there as well. Um, however, she also has an Instagram. Make sure you go follow her on IG. Give this woman support. Don't forget about the YouTube. Let me run it back because she has some very powerful podcast shows out there with important topics that need to be discussed. And she does not hold back her or her guests. And, you know, that's what we need. More of that in the community, more of that in society in general. And um, I just definitely want to have you back on the show uh, during Black History Month because you'll be the perfect person to have uh, these important conversations with going into 2024. 
most definitely. We'll see if we can get Miss Jane to get back, back on the show as well, and maybe you can chop it up with her also. But uh, before we go, I just want to know, do you have any other final words to the audience today? Um, uh, you either throw me come up like Cardi B or they can come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there is one thing I want to tell my audience before we wrap up today. I want you guys to go check out um, my YouTube channel, of course, for the people who haven't yet, because a lot of people do support this show. They share it on Facebook all the time. But share with your family and friends. Go check out some of the videos that we've done with some very, very, very important and amazing people that have done a lot of work for the community. Also, don't forget to go check out my short film. It's streaming across the bottom here. Check out Nella. It is on my website, sisterstalk.org slash Nella. Very good movie. Um, very, It's a short film, but it's hitting all the points of life as an African-American female at different stages and different ages of life. So you definitely want to check that out. And um, different, you really are just different. The topic just speaks for you. So I want to thank you one more time for coming on to the show today. And I do hope that you continue doing great things and you link up with all the people, your team and crew that you need to link up with to do the amazing things in Houston and beyond. I really appreciate this uh, companionship that we developed here on the show today. Now, for the rest of you guys that came on late or will come on, make sure you like, comment, and share this show. We want to make sure this promulgates throughout the universe throughout the internet and make sure you go check out my girl's uh tiktok now i don't know if i have the right link here or not but i'm gonna go back to it one more time boom is tiktok on there no that's youtube let me see if i can grab it for everybody so i have it okay yeah that was a tiktok okay cool cool just wanted to make sure all right guys well, we're gonna wrap this show up you all right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview I did with the lovely host, Miss Danielle Migo. I like her last name, uh, of the Sister Talk podcast. And again, big shout out to her for having me. If you guys tuned in and listened, uh, you guys seen how we were just chit chatting about, you know, being into our own and, you know, me sharing my story and my past and overcoming, you know, homelessness and foster care and how, you know, just it's my goal in life just to use my story and my. My, my trials and tribulations and show, you know, how God can take you from the back to the front and just, you know, put it in your heart and mind to, to go after whatever it is in life that you manifested and planning for. You guys, I live and breathe this motto. You know, I've seen it come to life, man, when you speak words of beauty and then remove all those negative thoughts and start reprogramming your mind, man, amazing things happen. Miracles happen. And so with that, you guys, if you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview, show me by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that, you know, notifi- that notification bell and that subscribe button so when I drop content, you guys come into different world and come and learn, yeah? Uh, what else we got going on, moving on? Uh, as well as, don't forget, check out all my uh, social media handles at my website, differencewell.net. Again, my, of course, my YouTube channel, my TikTok, and uh, um, uh, what else I got? I ain't on Facebook or, um, excuse me, yeah. I'm not on Facebook or Twitter, but I am on Instagram, so check me out there. Uh, What else we got, you guys? As well, anybody out there that's looking for motivation speakers, looking to do collaborations with your podcast, or looking for me to be part of your grassroots conversations, you know, get at your girl. You know, my website, again, is differenceworld.net. My booking fee is pro bono as of now, so get in good while you can. As well as, you guys, don't forget, and this is holiday season, so it's a good time to get all the bookworms in your family a gift that keeps on giving with my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, which is available on my website, again, differentworld.net. And again, this book was written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised that if you can't think this type of heat, still come on to the kitchen. Just, you know, get your little fire cooking. You'll be okay. It's all right. <laughs> That's the point of it all, you guys, is to have these conversations that need to be had that are often swept under the rug and, you know, people turn a blind eye to and that's the point of it all, you know, putting it in that controversial manner to get your attention to come to that round table and once we got it, come and learn about the real reason what we're talking about. It's more than, you know, just grabbing people their own ways about unity, accountability, acknowledgement, coming up with ways where we can create systemic change. And so, again, 
go to my website, dippingtwell.net, and get your copy of my book. And again, get one, get two, get you know, ten copies, and share it with you know your friends and family. I again appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Please keep it coming and don't stop, you guys. Um, what else with that being said? What else we got going on? So much, like so much to do, so little time. <laughs> this one just breezing through it, you guys. But as well as tomorrow is Thursday, so you guys know on Thursday we do our pop culture slash movie review. So I'll be dropping another hot one for you guys uh, this week. You know, like I said, it's, it's birthday week, so you know we turn it up. We we dropping one for you, at least three for you out of this week, especially on my birthday this Friday. So be a look, be on the lookout. And again, that's why you guys gotta hit that notification bell and that subscribe button. So when I drop content, you guys get notified, and then you come into Dippin's World and you come and learn. Yeah. All right, you guys. So with that being said, let's move on to one of our most important topics in Difference World in my YouTube channel is our mental health check time for anybody that may need it, including myself. And of course, with it being the holiday season, uh, I've learned that Christmas time is the most depressing time. And so, so again, anybody out there that's going through any type of mental anguish, stress, or illness, be it you know depression, having suicidal thoughts, anxiety, you know, even dealing with bullying or you know, drug relapse, please know that it is okay to not be okay, but don't ever sit there and not be okay. Go get help, whatever that may mean to you, be it talking to a family member, a therapist, a friend, picking up a hobby, uh, mending broken bridges, cutting people off, even getting on medication is that the case. You know, do whatever it is that you have to do to keep your mental health in check and keep you from going off the deep end and possibly taking anybody with you. If you need or if you know anybody who may need these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255 or you can call or text 988 or you can text 741-741. And for those that would prefer to go online, you guys can check out mentalhealthishealth.us or you can visit 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S. that's watching your girl's YouTube channel, you guys check out incounseling.com. That is spelled again, E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, although I am giving you these mental health resources, you have to remember that it's on you to do your own homework and your own research and find what works best for you. Because at the end of the day, you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate the water. Nobody else. And with that being said, lastly, with every trial and tribulation that you are going through at this time of your life, please remember that this too shall pass, and so you will get through it. And so going off the deep end is not an option, it's not worth it, so don't do it, okay? And so with that being said, just remember to keep your mental health in check by any means necessary, you guys. And we're going to move on and close out from the mental health check on a more positive note. Uh, again, you guys, hope you guys enjoy listening and watch, uh, uh, listening to my audio interview again, sorry, with the Sisters Hog podcast. Again, be sure to check out my girl, Danielle Miguel. Uh, her link is down below. So again, after you guys check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button, go on over to my girl and check out her uh, short story, uh, Nella. It's pretty awesome. I, I like it. And so go check it out on her YouTube channel. The link is below. And again, for mine, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So again, when I drop content, you guys come into Difference World and you come and learn. And also, with that being said, you guys, don't forget, whatever it is in life that you are feeling you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. And it will surely come to you guys. Difference World, come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustration, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.